Welcome to Business News. Now we begin with reports that Nigeria's Economic Summit for 2019 is geared towards positioning the country for the fourth industrial revolution. Finance Minister Zainab Ahmed describes its focus on critical sectors as catalyst to achieving this. Correspondent Lara Afolayo has details in this report. The United Nations predicts Nigeria's population doubling by the year 2050. It also describes inadequacy of jobs as triggers for a demographic growth of young, unemployed and underemployed people. The Nigerian Economic Summit with the theme, Nigeria 2050, Shifting Gears, hopes to find solutions to this problem through constructive engagement. Shifting Gears emphasizes the imperatives for the economy to move from a more robust, to move from a more robust competitive private sector while addressing the implications of the projected population of the country hitting 400 million by the year 2050. In this regard, it is only a competitive private sector-led economy that will drive the process of growth and ensure economic prosperity for all Nigerians. The economic summit has held for 25 years now and its facilitators believe it has helped shape a number of reforms. The privatization and commercialization of public enterprises was one of the early discussions at the first few summits. The liberalization of the telecommunications sector, and I recall it was probably one of the uh, most heated debates at the second summit, as well as the medium-term plans, such as the National Economic Empowerment and Development Strategy needs in 2003, and the current economic recovery and growth plan. The fiscal authorities are sure of taking recommendations from the 25th summit a step further. So we'll invite the NESD to present uh, the, the recommendations of the report to the National Economic Council that has all the governors, to the economics management team that, team that has key ministers that manage the economy, to the Federal Executive Council, and also to relevant committees of the National Assembly. That we believe will enhance the performance of the implementation of the recommendations. The 25th Economic Summit will bring together players in the public and private sector, the civil society, the academia, as well as the international community on putting in place a narrative that will set a private sector-led long-term agenda for Nigeria. Lara Folayo, TVC News, Abuja. Shift and focus now, we look at the maritime sector as the need for enabling laws that would drive reforms in Nigeria's maritime sector has been re-emphasized. This formed the basis of discussions by industry operators as they focused on the importance of viable maritime policies for sustainable growth and development at a forum in Lagos. TVC News correspondent Ifunaya Eze reports. Operators and users of Nigeria's ports facilities have over time expressed dissatisfaction with the prevailing rules of engagement. The contention is that government's reform agenda is not being driven by enabling laws and policies that can effectively facilitate trade and support investments in the sector. Echoing this position, participants at this forum want a new paradigm especially in policy formulation and implementation. We have rivers and creeks, estuaries, you know, and the inland waterways. You know, Nigeria is so vast that we have about 195,000 square kilometers. Vast hinterland. So, which means the chain is as vast as it is varied. It's a very important advantage. In fact, Nigeria is at the center of the world. But, what do we do with it? Many countries with a kind of a, a endowment of the presence of body of water, they've done far much more in fishing, in ocean or maritime uh, tourism, in trade, in port development. They've done far much more and take far more advantage. So my advantage, my advice to all of us as a nation is that we must get the policy right, we must get better understanding of maritime, and we must get much more involved. We can make practical innovations to cope these challenges, and we have to be forward-thinking, we have to be smart about it, and we have to 
a major a major thing is the public private partnership that is very important in the industry so we need to reform our laws we need to reform we need to, we need to make reform you know, reforms as to areas that we think is not good with the heightened calls for the passage of the national transport commission bill operators are urging the federal government to provide basic infrastructure such as good roads and rail connectivity to facilitate movement of cargoes out of the port Given the fact that over 90% of world's trade relies on the maritime sector for effective transportation, the question of innovation and reform must be a constant consideration of stakeholders in the country if we must remain relevant and increase our market share on the continent. The security of the nation's maritime domain was also an issue of concern at the forum intensifying calls to fortify the nation's coastal areas and boundaries against maritime crimes. Ifunanya Eze, TVC News, Lagos. On the international front now, Russia says there is enough oil in global stockpiles to replace barrels Saudi Arabia has temporarily lost due to attacks on its facilities. Energy Minister Alexander Novak says the world has enough commercial stockpiles to cover the shortage in the midterm. Mr. Novak adds that Russia is sticking to its commitment under the global oil production deal and it was premature to talk about any possibly changes uh, to production levels. Saudi Arabia, the United States and China have hundreds of millions of barrels of oil in strategic storage. The International Energy Agency, which coordinates energy policies of industrialized nations, advises all its members to keep the equivalent of 90 days of net oil imports in storage. And lastly on the news now, Britain's stock market watchdog London Stock Exchange says overlapping British and European Union share trade and rules would damage markets. Britain is due to leave the EU on October 31 but has yet to agree a divorce settlement with the bloc. Brussels says if there is a no-deal Brexit, investment firms in the bloc must trade euro-denominated shares in the EU. Many are currently heavily traded in London. Financial Conduct Authority CEO Andrew Bailey says extensive preparations for a no-deal Brexit would not mean that all disruptions in the markets can be avoided. And that's it on business news.